Hello everyone and welcome back to the 13 Nights of Magic, the series dedicated to bringing you some of the spookiest stories from Magic the Gathering in celebration of this Halloween season. In tonight's video, let's take a look at the most ghoulish guild on the plane of Ravnica, the Orzhov Syndicate. But what, if anything, makes this guild more ghoulish than, let's say, the Demir or Rakdos? Well, probably because the Orzhov are literally run by ghouls, ghosts to be more precise. But why would any guild take orders from the dead? To understand this strange hierarchy of command, we must first learn about the Syndicate itself. The Orzhov Syndicate is one of the great ten guilds found on the plain of Ravnica. Ravnica, a world which is comprised of one huge metropolis, is governed by these feuding guilds who vie for power and control over the city. As these guilds separated and formed their own identities, each fell into a specific niche or role and became aligned with different sources of mana. The Orzhov Syndicate was in fact the leading religious organization on Ravnica, meaning this guild governed the spirituality of the plain. Their sense of community and religion aligned the Orzhov with white mana, while their close work with the dead also left them tied to black mana as well, although their black mana alignment would come from another source later in their history. The Orzhov continued their strong religious practices up until the signing of the first guild pact, the Guild Pact was a magical document signed centuries ago in order to keep the Guilds of Ravnica from continuously fighting. You see, as the Guilds developed, they each started getting the idea that one could probably gain control over the entire city and thus rule the world. This realization prompted countless wars, feuds, and untold destruction to befall the plain. To prevent the world from literally imploding in on itself, the guild masters of each guild agreed to sign the Guild Pact, which magically prevented them from any further conflicts with one another. The guild master for the Orzov at this time was not a single person, but rather a group of high-ranking officials within the organization. They were known as the Obzidat, a council of pious leaders who governed the guild's activities. They all agreed that signing the Guild Pact would be the most beneficial thing for the Orzhov Syndicate, but they also knew that the benefits didn't stop at just peace. In the post-Guild Pact world of Ravnica, the guilds still fought for power and control but through non-violent means. Many guilds were increasing territory through treaties and alliances, while others were stockpiling and hoarding resources. The Orzhov of course controlled the religion of the plain, but that didn't really mean much in the grand scheme of the Ravnican power struggle, so they shifted their business plan. The Obzidat realized that as an organization, religion could be very profitable, and nothing was more powerful than raw wealth. The Orzov Syndicate began collecting income from the populace with added fervor, quickly making them one of the richest guilds on Ravnica. With this newfound wealth, the guild started acting more like a banking establishment rather than an actual church. Behind all the ceremonies and religious practices, there was always some money to be made or exchanged, borrowed or loaned out. They were officially the guild of business. The Orzov brokered deals with almost everyone on Ravnica, from the peasant shopkeepers to even other guild masters. If you needed money, you saw the Obzidat in Orzova, the Church of Deals. As greed took over the once religious Orzov, its leaders began to pine over their own existence. What good would all this power and wealth be if they're dead? Well, thanks to their practices in the church, the Obzidet found a way to keep their power even after death. Using a form of necromancy, which they had previously forbidden, the leaders of the Orzov Syndicate tethered their souls to the guild. Upon their deaths, the spirits of the Obzidat Council were allowed to come back and rule over guild activities, effectively meaning their ghosts would rule for all time. With the last death of the original group, those who were present at the signing of the Guild Pact, they were renamed the Obzidat Ghost Council. The first Ghost Council was of course made up of those original members of the Obzidat, but that doesn't mean they all stayed on the council. Like a true business, even its leaders must act in true self-interest to the guild or they get fired. Membership to the Ghost Council is based on performance, with the others able to vote off a member should their deals be less than adequate. When a Ghost Council member is... Uh, released from duty, another high-ranking living member of the guild is chosen based on their activities throughout their lives to join upon their death. 
Their mastery over death and necromancy allowed the Obsidat to take on even more aggressive deals. Even if a loan was obviously too large to ever be paid back by the person receiving it, the council didn't worry. For if someone couldn't pay them back during their life, they certainly would in their death. The Obsidat would order the person in debt to be executed, after which their souls would be controlled by the guild mages of the Orzov. These ghosts would be forced to do the guild's dirty work, while their bodily remains were reanimated into thralls to do manual labor. This torturous afterlife would continue for as long as the Obsidat deemed necessary, until that person fulfilled their debt plus interest. The Obsidat may seem cruel in their treatment of souls, but they're also pretty cruel to the living as well. For a so-called religious organization, one wouldn't think the Orzov would support a system such as slavery, but they do, and in fact, regularly keep slaves of their own. To them, it's all about that bottom dollar, and free labor is just another way to skim profits from the top. The sigil of the Orzov Syndicate is a shining purple sun with glowing gold rays. Although it may inspire hope to those still blind to the true purpose of this church, those who bear this symbol know it far too well. If you see a member of the Syndicate wearing this symbol as a medallion around their neck, its bearer is a master. If you see a member wearing the sigil as a tattoo on their body, they're most likely a slave. The purple center represents the Obsidic Ghost Council. The gold rays represent their power and wealth, spreading out in sharp points, ready to spear any who dare cross them. If you agree with Thomas Jefferson who stated that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies, then you would have to agree that the Orzov Syndicate is one of the most dangerous guilds on Ravnica. They are loan sharks who play with people's lives and their very souls, all while being cloaked in the guise of a religious organization. They combine the greatest sources of good and evil into one terrifying package, and it doesn't help that they're also run by, you know, ghosts. And that, my friends, is the story behind the Orzov Syndicate and their leaders, the Obsidak Ghost Council. As a part of this 13 Nights of Magic series, I'll be giving away a copy of the Obsidak to one lucky viewer. I really couldn't decide which version of the card would be more fitting to give out, so I'm letting you guys decide in the comments. Which card would you rather me give out? Ghost Council of Orzovia from Guild Pack, or Obsidak Ghost Council from Gatecrash? Let me know in the comments below. Remember that each Night of Magic offers you a new story and another chance to win a different card, so stay tuned to see what other Monsters of Magic are offered this October. I'd also like to mention that the topic for this video was suggested by Dallas, a patron on my Patreon. I allow my patrons to suggest topics for future videos, and I really liked his selection for the Obsidic Ghost Council. If you'd like to suggest future videos and get cool stuff every month, along with weekly Patreon-specific giveaways, take a look at what my Patreon has to offer. In any case guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider hitting the like button and sharing it with your friends. It goes a long way in supporting future content. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next Night of Magic.